Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Day four in the search for three-year-old Lena Kiel. She was last seen at the Via del Cabo apartment complex in the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road. That was on Monday. And that is where we find our John Paul Barajas live this evening. John Paul, any new details in this case? Myra, Stephanie, uh, unfortunately, there is no new updates according to SAPD, and we've been out here all day. We have seen a few FBI agents walking around the complex going door to door, and although the police presence wasn't that significant, SAPD and authorities say it's all hands on deck to find Lena. Now, what we do know so far is police say Lena is three years old and was last seen wearing a black jacket, a red dress, and black shoes. Right now, investigators are still treating this as a missing persons case and not as a child abduction crime because they have no suspects. But they did say as the investigation continues, that could change. Another thing to note, the Muslim community has raised $75,000 in reward money for anyone with information. And SAPD is still pleading with anyone who was here at the Villas del Cabo apartment complex on Monday between 4.30 p.m. and 5.10 p.m. to contact their missing persons unit. That number is 210 210- 207 7660. They say no detail is too small. We'll continue following the story and bring you the latest. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. John Paul, thank you. And now new at six, she was a live in supervisor at a home for abused and orphaned children in Kerrville. And now she's behind bars. Her name is Alexandra Galindo. The Kerr County Sheriff's Office says that the 30-year-old had sexual relationships with at least two kids while she worked at the Hill Country Youth Ranch. Investigators say they received a tip that she was having inappropriate contact with children living on campus. And then when they went to check it out, they found digital evidence. So they arrested her. And then she bound it out. But then they found more evidence and booked her a second time. And now she's in jail on a $100,000 bond. A man accused of killing an unborn child in a crash earlier this year now indicted on a manslaughter charge. That indictment accuses Constantino Tristian Coronado in the death of Austin Rodriguez back on May 28th. Authorities say his mother, who was pregnant at the time, was involved in that crash. A firefighter paramedic also injured in this incident. Tristian Coronado faces a few other charges as well. Okay, so this is what you'd call a rough day on the job. An Amazon truck was left dangling just like that from an overpass this morning. It happened on I-35 near Widener Road. Police say around 630 this morning, the driver lost control, crashed, and that caused the cab to plunge off the elevated highway right onto the access road. And police are saying the Amazon truck wasn't hauling any packages, but it did take a long time to clean everything up. And now the transportation department has to fix that highway wall that was damaged. A former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter found guilty today. She's convicted of first and second degree manslaughter and the deadly shooting of Dante Wright during an April traffic stop. Potter previously pleaded not guilty. Her legal team arguing that she mistook her gun for a taser and that she was justified in using deadly force because she feared that Wright would injure another officer while driving away. But the prosecution calling Potter's actions rash and reckless. There's no mistake defense. You will not see an instruction on the defense of mistake. The judge will not give you an instruction that says a person is not guilty if they commit a mistake. That's not the law. The jury deliberated for four days before delivering this verdict. Dante Wright's family releasing a statement that they are, quote, relieved that the justice system has provided some measure of accountability. Now back here at home, the San Antonio Fire Department has a message after a house on the east side went up in flames this morning. And the message is be careful. Our Jaffany Gray has some tips to stay safe during the holidays. My biggest concern coming into the holidays is always fireworks. Sparks in the sky are not the only things firefighters are concerned about during the holiday season. San Antonio Fire Department spent the morning putting out flames in the front room of this home on Nopal Street from what they believe started from a space heater, a fact that is stressing the importance of safety and fire hazards during Christmas. If you have a, a, you know, a real tree, 
keep it watered, unplug it at night, things like that. Or keep heat sources, no candles near Christmas trees. The National Safety Committee also says to replace light sets that have broken or cracked sockets, bare wires, or loose connections. Despite a warm Christmas this year, if you plan to use a fireplace, use a screen on the fireplace at all times and never burn trees, wreaths, or wrapping paper inside them. Never leave candles or fireplaces burning unattended when you're asleep. And finally, be sure to have working smoke detectors. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. From 25 million down to 5 million, the Brackenridge Park Conservancy has seen its request for city bond money continue to shrink. The Conservancy says that it needs city dollars for a $62 million plan to renovate the city-owned Sunken Garden Theater. Garrett Berger talks with the Conservancy about how it plans to move ahead. This is the vision for the Sunken Garden Theater. New facilities, professional light and sound systems, and a sweeping roof over the stage and expanded seating. In its most basic terms, it's the renovation of this iconic 1930s theater. Brackenridge Park Conservancy's incoming president, Nicholas Hollis, hopes the planned overhaul will make the venue more attractive to performers. Last year, 89 acts bypassed San Antonio that went through Texas to the other three cities. Renovating this place is a big lift, and the Conservancy's plan comes with a big price tag. They're hoping for city, county, and private dollars to help make it happen but they say they need that city buy-in. Everyone's going to ask, well, you know, what's the city putting in first? The Conservancy had wanted $25 million from the city bond. Right off the bat, they weren't getting it all. The city staff uh, rec initially recommended to the council $20 million. Um, after we got council feedback, we reduced it to 10. But since city staff have a plan to fund $15 million from a different pot of money, too, the Conservancy was okay with that. But a citizen committee charged with making its own bond recommendations just cut their bond request in half again. Losing $5 million out of a $62 million project wouldn't be a fatal blow, but it's not pocket change either. It means that, it, it, you know, we have to find those funds somewhere else, or there are things that we most possibly might not be able to do. For now, the Conservancy hopes City Council will boost its cut of the bond back up to $10 million before it goes to voters. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's take a look outside with live cam this evening. Nearly 70 degrees out there. We're all getting our Christmas T-shirts ready. <laughs> That's right. No ugly Christmas sweaters. It's ugly Christmas T-shirts this year because go. we're going to be fairly warm on Christmas Day. Even today, you know, we started off with plenty of clouds, but eventually we saw sun 71 for the high. That's warmer than average. Now, this is not great news in the uh, pollen count. Mountain cedar is very high today. This is the highest it's been all season so far and molds are, are low. So will this Christmas be naughty or nice? The forecast I'll let you decide. Side. Nice things, afternoon sunshine and quiet Texas travel weather. Not so nice. Yeah, we're going to be 15 degrees above average with morning fog and drizzle and it'll be money muggy out there. So I'm going to give it a C uh, out of uh, A through D. So kind of a middle tier forecast for us this Christmas, but I'll have the details for you coming up in just a bit. All right, thanks, Sarah. Well, weather won't likely affect your holiday road trip, but traffic probably will. Definitely will. Samuel King joins us now, and Samuel, AAA is coming out with some advice for us, and it's saying that leaving early or maybe even a little later can help you avoid delays. What, what do you have? Yeah, people tend to leave at the same time, Stephanie and Meyer. I think they all have the same idea, but AAA says the time between noon and 6 is the busiest time for a holiday travel the next two days. So that includes today and between 2 and 6 tomorrow on Christmas Eve. So to avoid the crowds, consider heading out early tomorrow or even Christmas morning if you can, or head out after 7 p.m., just not too late, though. Something to consider is maybe leaving on the holiday itself if you can. You know, typically traffic is lightest on those days. You know, and AAA recommends that you drive during hours that you're normally awake to avoid drowsy driving. And despite concerns about the Omicron variant, millions of people are expected to drive to their destination this year. That includes more than 8 million Texans. Now, how about coming back? Some of the heaviest travel days will be after Christmas, but before New Year's Eve. That's according to the transportation analytics company, Enrix. Also forecast this Monday and Tuesday as particularly 
heavy travel days. Also taking a look at uh, traffic uh, this evening. This is near the airport 281 at San Pedro. We've been telling you that there more people are going to be flying uh, this year, so watch out for those delays. Uh, heading into town is where we're seeing the delays. 38 minutes on 35 coming in from New Braunfels. Also some slowdowns here on the northwest side on 1604. So 10 minutes now between I-10 and Bandera Road, and we'll have a look there at 1604 at Hausman in the construction zone. The good news, Meyer and Stephanie, no construction this weekend because of the holidays. Oh, yeah, that would definitely make a bad thing worse. All right, Sam, thank you. Still ahead on your News at 6, we are going to introduce you to a woman who's known as the sidewalk artist. You're going to hear what inspires her and how the community is responding to her work. Stick around. So here's what we're working on for you tonight on the night beat. So much has changed almost two months after a woman was shot in the face at the quarry. Now, KSAT's speaking with a shooting survivor, and we're going to have an update on her recovery, and we're also going to join her as she returns to the crime scene. It started with a story just like this. A divine woman sees a news article about the need for a donor to save a child's life, and she makes the call. Tonight, she embraces that child for the first time, and she hopes to inspire you. Also this, we continue our coverage in the search for little Lena Keel, and that is all tonight on The Night Beat. A local artist is taking her creativity to the streets, or the sidewalks, rather. Shay Daniel Youngblood sets up her easel around town, and she starts painting whatever catches her eye that day. KSAT photojournalist Luis Cienfuegos shares her story as he captures her colors on camera. So this is my favorite thing to do in the world, and it's called plein air painting. It's just painting in the open air or outdoors. I was just walking around kind of looking for a subject matter and that little pink umbrella over there um, next to all those beautiful flowers and that wonderful palm tree caught my eye. So that's kind of the focal point of what I'm doing. A lot of times people will honk. I know one of the Via bus drivers, so sometimes he'll pass by like that. But a lot of times people will stop, pull over and ask me what I'm doing. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of visiting that goes on. About five years ago, I took a plein air painting class. I had never done that before. I had painted since I was 18, but not like that. Nothing that regular and nothing like that. And um, so I took a class because I knew it would make me a better painter really fast, and it did. The light changes, so just every kind of sensory experience you can have uh, occurs. So there's just like so much happening, you know, and what you're trying to do is kind of capture all that. I love being outside and I really love just kind of like the everyday scenes. I just can sort of like tune everything out and hone in on what it is that is going on. Sometimes I feel joy. Sometimes I feel just like fatigue or heat, you know, lots of, lots of things, but mostly in the zone. It's my happy place. It's just like a connection. I feel like it makes me part of this city. She's got a gift. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was just saying she, it's really nice. All right, now here's a live picture. Sky 12 now over at Alamo Plaza where, I don't know, I mean, what, it's Christmas Eve tomorrow. I, I mean, I've been in the mood for a long time, but uh, that'll get you in the mood because the weather sure isn't. Nope, it's not. <laughs> you know what? We're stuck with it. Yeah. yeah, we're stuck with it, and we've been stuck with it all December long. It's not just you. This December has been exceptionally warm. Take a look at the month so far, and now we are 8.6 above average, degrees above average for this month. Every little red square you see there is a day where the temperature has been above average. And guess what? I think that every single additional square here is going to be red as well, as we're expecting a warmer uh, than average forecast for the remainder of 2021. So it's going to be interesting. I think that this December is in the run for the warmest December ever in San Antonio's history. We'll keep you updated. But for most of the day today, there were plenty of clouds. In fact, clouds were slow to erode around San Antonio. We had morning fog and drizzle 
drizzle and the clouds went away around San Antonio, one of the last areas where the clouds went away and that really affected temperatures. I mean, it's still 85 degrees in Catula. It's 81 in Del Rio. That was the high temperature in Del Rio. 85 was the high in Catula and 81 in Carrizo Springs. So very warm where they saw plenty of sunshine. Meanwhile, around San Antonio, we got up to 71 degrees for the high temperature, 74 in New Braunfels. So it was a little cooler around San Antonio this afternoon because those clouds stuck around. And one of the reasons why we've been so warm is because the humidity is high for this time of year. Dew points are right near 60 degrees right now. And usually this time of year, we get a cold front that moves through, knocks the temperatures and the humidity down. But dew points are just going to coast right near 60 degrees for not only Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, but for the remainder of 2021 as well. Now, I do think that tomorrow morning we're going to have a very similar uh, morning to this morning where we feature clouds fog visibility will be less than a mile in many places early tomorrow and even some patchy drizzle so we could have some uh, lightly damp spots out there now this time the better chance for fog is pretty much along and west of 35 it was a bit opposite uh, this morning uh, but we will see those clouds stick around through the morning they're going to be stubborn but right around lunch that's when we'll see skies clear and we'll have a warm afternoon with highs well into the 70s, even in the 80s in some places. It'll be 82 in Del Rio, 83 in Catula, 82 in Carrizo Springs, right near 80 degrees around the metro area, 83 in Pleasanton and in San Antonio, forecast high of 78. All right, all of the weather action is across the western portion of the United States. And in fact, this may cause a bit of a headache for air travel tomorrow. We'll keep an eye on things for you. But here in San Antonio and the southern tier, a high pressure system is going to send all of this weather up and over South Central Texas, and it's going to meander into next week as well. So that is why we're going to experience that southern Christmas sizzle because that upper level high is going to hang around uh, through Christmas Day and into next week as well. So looking at that high temperature forecast tomorrow, as I mentioned, 78 Christmas Day, 81. Now, if we get to 81, that'll be the third warmest Christmas we've ever seen in San Antonio. So yeah, going to be a warm one. 82 on Sunday and then into next week, uh, we're going to be seeing temperatures hover right around 80 degrees for the high. So tomorrow for Christmas Eve, fog and drizzle in the morning, 56 degrees. Uh, and then right around noon, that's when we'll see things clear and temperatures will get into the upper 70s by the afternoon. Mostly sunny and warm south winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so a little breezy. Now I'm excited because I got the job of tracking Santa tomorrow on air. <laughs> and so we'll be able to see where he is after that sun sets. But remember kids, he really only comes when you're asleep. Uh, we'll be looking at morning fog and drizzle Christmas morning, 81 for the high, similar story Sunday. And we've got ditto weather for the remainder of the seven day forecast with morning clouds, afternoon sun and temperatures a lot warmer than average this time of year. Mm hmm. OK, thank you, Sarah. All right, so you know we're a little excited right now because we have reason to be for the Spurs. They are in LA, right. and the Lakers are not looking too good. Well, they're the short-handed, and the guy that killed them the first two games, Anthony Davis, is out for a month. So this is a game set up for them to win. And remember what happened in Sacramento? A game that was set up for them to win, and they blew it. So this is one they have to focus on. When we come back, we'll get you ready for the big game tonight, and a little friendly cowboy wager between the offense and defense coming up. San Antonio Spurs will try and close out their four-game West Coast road trip tonight with a win against the Lakers as after they beat the Clippers in the Staples Center Tuesday, 116-92. And tonight will be looking to score their first win of the season against the Lakers. They're dropping their game in San Antonio October the 26th, 125-121 to in overtime and in L.A. back in November the 14th, 114-106. LeBron James is listed as day-to-day -day after rolling his ankle on Jay Crowder in the Lakers' loss to the Phoenix Suns, but he did return in that game to score 34 in the losing cause. But the big name that is out is Anthony Davis. Davis, who is nursing an MCL sprain in his left knee, has missed the last three games with the Lakers have lost. Big because it was AD who burned the Spurs for 35 points, 14 rebounds in the first meeting, and 34 points and 15 rebounds in their second. The Spurs need to avoid history repeating itself. After surprising the Jazz in Utah, 128 to 126, they lost to a shorthanded Kings team in Sacramento, 121 114. The last couple games, big win and big letdown. So um, we got. 
enjoy this one for a little bit, but then get ready for the Lakers coming up. So um, next game mentality. You got that right. Tip time is tonight at 930. Early highlights for you tonight on the night beats. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. With just three games left in the regular season, starting with the Washington football team this Sunday night, quarterback Dak Prescott and the defensive end and Demarcus Lawrence have wager going on between the offense and defense. It's touchdowns versus takeaways. And after the 21-6 win against the Giants in New York, the defense has the lead right now, 4-2. It's after the Dallas D scored three interceptions and one forced fumble to the Cowboys, one rushing touchdown and one passing touchdown. We don't know what the offense or defense will exactly win if they win the wager. There's been talk of a trip, but it's just another incentive to finish out this season and run through the playoffs when they clinch. Just a challenge between fellow teammates. Uh, you know, a little competition won't hurt, so uh, figured it was, you know, give it a good try to see if, you know, offense can uh, beat us on, on turnovers versus touchdowns. And, uh, you know, uh, defense won this one. You know, we'll see what they got this week. All right, less than 24 hours are just setting a record for quarterbacks. Former Smithson Valley star Levi Williams has decided to enter the transfer portal. This comes after Williams led Wyoming to a 52-38 victory over Kent State in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, where he became the first quarterback to rush for 200 yards and four touchdowns, another passing touchdown in the bowl game. Williams wrote on social media, I would like to say that my time here at Wyoming has been one I am truly grateful for. I want to thank Coach Bowl for giving me the opportunity to play in brown and gold. I was blessed with great teammates, and I appreciate all the time I got to spend with him. Now the question is, is where will the six-foot-five quarterback wind up after graduating from Smithson Valley in 2018? Mario Barrios is looking to start 2022 with a big-time win in a new weight class. And Barrios will face former welterweight champion Keith Thurman in a 12-round welterweight showdown on Saturday, February the 5th at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. This will be another pay-per-view event, this time through premier boxing champions. Both fighters are coming off lone career losses with Barrios losing to Gervonta Davis back in the summer and Thurman losing to Manny Pacquiao in 2019. 19, the Southwest High School grad will be fighting for the first time at 147 pounds. The pay-per-view cost has not been announced as yet. Both fighters will meet face-to-face -face at a press conference next Wednesday afternoon. And coming up at 10 tonight, some update for you on, of course, the Spurs and who's replacing the Aggies in the Gator Bowl. Oh, Got that for you. Yeah, big question. Mm -hmm. there. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. You know, it's really the last thing that we wanted, yet another COVID Christmas, but here we are, and we're dealing with yet another COVID variant. So how do we all stay safe? Dr. Ruth Bergren, an infectious disease specialist with the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio, joining us now to talk about all of our biggest COVID questions. Doctor, good to see you. I appreciate you being here on this holiday week. So let's start with Omicron, because we know that the information about how it affects people has been evolving as more people get infected. What are the symptoms of Omicron, especially the differences between it and Delta? So the differences are subtle and people shouldn't spend a lot of time trying to discern which one do I have. But here's the thing you do need to know. If you don't feel good, if you feel achy, if you have a scratchy sore throat, some congestion, you feel like the flu might be coming on, assume this could be COVID. Go get a rapid test, put a mask on. Okay, now our meteorologist has also been talking about the allergies that people might be uh, getting during this time of year. So how are you able to discern between, okay, I'm having allergies or this possibly could be a, a mild case of, of uh, COVID? How do you know? So it's tough to distinguish between allergies and COVID coming on, but if you know your body and you know what you feel like when you're having allergies and that's all you've got, then you probably don't need to go get a test. But if in addition to your usual allergies, you are feeling body aches, if you have a fever, if you have an unusual headache, anything different, you feel black, go get a test. Yeah, Mountain Cedar is not doing us any favors on top of all of this. We know that people are running out, it seems, and just testing like crazy before getting together with friends or loved ones. We've seen the lines, the, the at-home tests, really hard to come by at this point. Tell us what we need to keep in mind when we're doing these tests ourselves before making the call on whether to go to someone's house. Right. So if you're just testing on general principles, you feel fine. You haven't had a known exposure and you just want to make sure before you go see grandma um, that you're OK, then uh, do the test. If it's negative, go see grandma. But if you are doing the test because of an exposure or if you are doing the test because you don't feel good, 
Don't assume that that negative result gives you the right or the opportunity to just rip off the mask and go see whoever you want. The rapid home tests need to be repeated. The instructions on most of them say, repeat this test in 24 to 36 hours. So if you're feeling blah, um, more than your usual allergies, and that's why you got the rapid test, if that rapid test comes back negative, don't assume you're out of the woods. Put your mask on. You don't have to quarantine, but put your mask on and don't go to crowded indoor places. Test yourself again in 24 to 36 hours. But we know that some of these at-home tests, we've talked about it with you, they can have false negatives. The chance of getting a false negative is higher with an at-home test than it is a false positive. So yes. let's say you've been exposed. You know you've been around someone who has tested positive for COVID. Same rules in effect there, same guidelines in terms of the timing and how often you should test? Yeah, if you're testing because of an exposure, it's wisest to wait at least three to five days, five days probably more than three, uh, before you trust the result of that test. And let's say for the people who do have those at home uh, test kits, do you know of any mistakes that, that people are making? Because, you know, we're not doctors. We don't usually know how to administer these tests ourselves. So do, can you give us any advice? Uh, no, just follow the instructions and, um, you know, don't, uh, Again, I think the most important public health message that I want to get across is that if you have symptoms and you have one negative at home test, you are not out of the woods and you need to mask and not go expose other people. And you need to get that test repeated either by the home test or go to a place where you can get a PCR test. Nobody wants to cancel their holiday plans, and we're all tired. We're tired of living with this. And some people may look at Omicron symptoms and say they're not that bad. They're not that severe. Numbers in our community, they're climbing. They sure are climbing, but they're not that bad when it comes to what we've seen in the past. What would you tell them about the way we should be thinking about this latest surge? Yeah, so it's always the case that things heat up. Um, out on the coasts, on the East Coast or the West Coast, um, and they're kind of like bellwethers for the rest of the country. And so even though uh, we have a low community positivity rate right now, it's been rising, true, but it's still relatively low, we can expect a surge. And why do I say that with great confidence? Just look at what's happening on the East Coast right now. People are unable to even get the tests because so many people are symptomatic and worse, the hospitals in many communities are needing help and even calling in the National Guard to help manage uh, just the, the sheer crowds of people that are coming to the hospital. So if that's happening in our country on the East Coast right now, we can anticipate that it will happen in Texas. And the way to mitigate it is to make sure that everybody gets vaccinated the vaccinated people need to get boosted and the masks need to come on and stay on when we go to crowded indoor places. But you are also a health care professional, and so you have the benefit of seeing the seeing this from a very different point of view, whereas I think the general public might just think of this as being sort of inconvenienced. And I think that's what you were getting at earlier, Myra. So but now that we're almost two years into this, what ha what do you what have you learned so far? Just looking back, what, how can you reflect on everything that's happened and, and say, this is what I've learned and this is what I advise people to do? So um, there's a lot of vulnerable people in our community that even even though you hear Omicron is mild, there are people that aren't vaccinated and people that could die from Omicron. That's number one. We don't want anybody to die from Omicron. We don't want people getting long covid from Omicron, and that's a very significant issue. And finally, with respect to those who say, well, it's just an inconvenience, I would argue that when the hospital is full and you can't get into the emergency room when you're having a heart attack or a stroke, it's a lot more than just inconvenient. It can actually be life and death if the hospitals are full of people in the emergency room because of COVID symptoms and uh, getting admitted and the rest of the people having their usual healthcare issues cannot get in, that is much more than an inconvenience. And so we need to consider that 
the, the health of the whole community needs to be thought about. Before we let you go, Dr. Bergwin, I just want to ask, you said we can expect to see a surge in Texas. So would you say it hasn't hit us yet, but it's going to after the holidays? The patterns that we've seen, especially on the East Coast, are that it kind of goes from zero to 60 in a week. Um, rapid, rapid acceleration in cases, and that's just because it's so infectious. It's a highly infectious variant of the SARS-CoV-2. So we're looking okay right now, but that doesn't mean it won't just shoot up, especially as people uh, go to parties and so forth um, during this Christmas holiday week. All right, Dr. Ruth Bergren from UT Health San Antonio, thank you so much for being with us and happy holidays to you. Yeah, wish you Thank you, you and I wish everyone health, health to everyone. Yeah, all right, thanks Dr. Bergren. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We mentioned construction work is suspended uh, for the uh, holiday week. Doesn't mean you won't see construction zones. You just won't see crews out there. So uh, that'll help keep things moving. This is a uh, 281 Hildebrand 90 at Don Galito. So you can see traffic uh, moving fairly well this evening, including here at the airport. We usually see delays on Loop 410, but not this evening. But keep in mind, if you are heading uh, to the airport, there might be some delays with some weather out west that Sarah has been talking about and also uh, COVID. Uh, there's some cruise crew issues with several airlines. So check with your airline before uh, heading to the airport over the next couple of days just for that. Just a, another travel reminder. Uh, things looking a lot better on the roads, but we do uh, have uh, some issues there. This is uh, the northwest side, eight minutes. This is what I was uh, talking about here. So still some slowdowns coming in from New Braunfels and uh, Seguin. We had a crash here in eastern Bear County. So uh, look out for that uh, this evening. And also some slowdowns out on the west side as we're mentioning this is 1604 at Hausman. So watch that again. No construction out there, Meyer and Stephania, but you're still going to be uh, seeing some of the lanes and, and the, the, the work, the it, equipment. That's what I'm trying to say <laughs> is out there. So watch out for that this weekend, too. Yeah, keep an eye on. Thanks, Sam. Let's take a look outside. Yeah, it's clear out there right now. We're yeah. going to be seeing temperatures fall, but barely. I mean, it's going to be a pretty mild evening. If you're not sensitive to cooler weather, you won't even need the jacket. Let's take a look at how temperatures will stack up this evening, dropping down to near 60 degrees by midnight, and more clouds and fog will develop overnight. So yes, technically, our Christmas Eve will start off as a foggy Christmas Eve with fog and drizzle out there in the early morning hours, but we will see afternoon sunshine. It'll get warm and we're talking low 80s Christmas Day. Yeah, Santa's going to want some Gatorade instead of that milk and cookies. I'll have a look at that forecast coming up in a bit. Welcome back. Right now, Tesla being investigated, and it's for a feature in its cars that allows drivers to play video games while the car's moving. What? This sounds like a terrible idea. The I National know. Highway Traffic Safety Administration says the passenger play feature has been available to drivers for almost two years now. The game, which is intended to be played by a passenger. That's the thing. Well, of course, but I mean, you know rules that it appears on the dashboard touch screen. But here's the thing. Federal safety regulators say that the driver can also play if if the car's on autopilot what? right now, it's investigating 11 accidents involving Tesla's autopilot and self driving features. We know that one person died and 11 others have been injured in those accidents that are now under investigation. That's crazy so much effort as goes into getting people not to be distracted while driving. I know. Now let's, you, now you have that video, right let's there. Let's put a video game. No, no thanks. Mm -mm, oh my gosh. You good. know when you're driving and you feel like you're already on autopilot, you're like, how did I end up here? Okay, I got here. Now you can literally be on autopilot? No, yeah. thank you. I know. Yeah. The autopilot features a whole, whole nother. I know. Right? Not good. Oh. Well, uh, our weather is kind of going to be on autopilot. We're going to be <laughs> sailing right near 80 degrees just about every day for the remainder of uh, 2021 with subtle differences here and there. So let's go ahead and take a look at how uh, we fared today. We got up to 71 degrees at the airport. 
But San Antonio was actually kind of the cool spot on the map, quote unquote cool spot on the map, because clouds were stubborn and stuck around for a long time. This is a look at the visible satellite. We had morning clouds, we had morning fog, we had areas of patchy drizzle. And then watch how the clouds just kind of closed in, clearing everywhere else but San Antonio and that I-35 corridor. And that's why we were at 71 rather than 75, 78 degrees today. Uh, but elsewhere, skies were clear for most of the day and that's still affecting temperatures now. We're still uh, seeing very warm weather out in Catula. It's 79 degrees. That's where they saw plenty of sunshine, even in Pleasanton 71 and 75 in Del Rio this evening. Now we're going to do it again. We're going to see clouds and fog tomorrow morning with areas of patchy drizzle because the humidity is just so gosh darn high. Dew points are right near 60 degrees. That's muggy on our scale there. And usually this time of year, we'll have one or two days where our dew points are higher, but we get a cold front that is not in the forecast. A cold front is not in the forecast for us for the remainder of 2021. We are going to see humidity stay steady right at about 60 degrees, not only tomorrow Christmas Eve and Christmas Day on Saturday, but into next week and into the remainder of 2021. So a toasty Christmas forecast for you tomorrow morning. We're going to see some uh, fog and drizzle 58 degrees 78 for the high temperature in the afternoon. We will see after afternoon sun. It's not like it's going to be unbearably warm out there, but it is going to be a lot warmer than seasonally average. And on Christmas Day itself, afternoon sun after that morning uh, fog and drizzle. If we get to 81, that would be our third warmest Christmas ever in San Antonio. Uh, so it's going to be definitely warm out there. All right. Samuel was hinting at this earlier, but on the western half of the United States, there's a fairly active weather pattern. We've got this deep upper level low that's bringing a river of moisture to California, producing some rain and across the Rockies, some snow. Usually we'd be excited seeing this off in the west because that would mean it would be coming out toward Texas and San Antonio. But because of this pesky big blue bully, that's what Adam Kasky calls it, high pressure system, we're going to see the, uh, the weather go up and over uh, South Central Texas and Texas in general. So if you're traveling tomorrow across the state of Texas, weather is going to be fairly quiet. There's not going to be any major problems there on the roads as far as the weather goes. Traffic's a different thing. But if you're traveling in the air tomorrow, there might be some problems because we're expecting snow across the western half of the U.S. and some heavier rain out toward L.A. Uh, and then similar story on Christmas Day as well with the snow mainly focused on the northern tier of the U.S. They're going to be enjoying a white Christmas, but we're going to be enjoying a warm Christmas uh, across all of Texas. So looking at that high res future cast, just to reiterate tomorrow morning, there will be areas of fog and drizzle, especially along and west of I-35 and then into the afternoon we will have some sunshine. So looking at that Christmas Eve forecast, 56 in the morning with that fog and drizzle clearing around noon a lot like we did today and then 78 for the afternoon high temperature sun's going to set at 542 we'll be tracking Santa Claus meteorologist Justin Horn and I as along with NORAD and so you'll be able to check that out on air online and we'll provide some updates on the KSAT Weather Authority app too but again no relief from the heat for the remainder of 2021 you know, I put my prognostication fingers out there, and I think that we could have a front early 2022, but that's still a long ways off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just have to enjoy this. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. <laughs> In case you missed it, coming up next. Oh, you know, it's been a busy day, so now here's today's In Case You Missed It. Check it out. It is Thursday, December 23rd. A big rig flew off I-35 on the northeast side in the middle of morning traffic, and somehow no one was hurt. This is either the worst day or the best day of an Amazon truck driver's life. We told police someone cut him off on Interstate 35 near Weedner around 6.30 this morning, causing his 18-wheeler to skid off the highway. The cab of the truck crash landed along the access road below, while the back end dangled above it. No injuries and no holiday packages lost. Police say the trailer of the Amazon truck was empty. New details this noon in that deadly crash investigation on the city's north side. Police now say a deer crossing the road actually led to a woman veer into a tree. Police say the driver was in a white Honda Accord heading north 
That's when officers say a deer crossed in front of her and she hit a tree along the southbound lane. Police say the woman was not wearing a seatbelt. She died there at the scene. Guilty. That's the verdict in the trial of a former Minnesota police officer charged with manslaughter in the death of Dante Wright. <laughs> Potter now charged with two counts of manslaughter in the killing of Wright during an April 11th traffic stop. Now, Potter has said she meant to use her taser on Wright, but instead used her gun. And caught on camera, a scary scene for a Georgia woman who was rescued after her car caught fire. An off-duty volunteer firefighter who just happened to be driving by says he saw the smoking car on the overpass and someone inside struggling. He grabbed his gear, radioed for backup, and used a wrench to break the window. That volunteer firefighter says he was just doing what he was trained to do. If you're heading into uh, San Antonio, things mostly look okay, except there on the northeast side. Some are usual delays on 35 approaching 1604 in San Antonio. If you're heading out of town, everybody's in a green except uh, for 87 heading out toward Lavernia, but even that is fairly normal. Here's how it looks on Transguide 281 at Bitters. Flowing well, 1604 at Hausman. You might run into some traffic, Sarah. Well, no weather problems on the road for uh, travel tomorrow, but it is going to be warmer uh, and we're going to have morning fog and drizzle afternoon high temperature of 78 for Christmas Eve, 81 Christmas Day. Yep, you heard that right. And looking into next week, we'll be seeing mornings near 60, afternoons near 80. Fairly mundane weather pattern for the end of <laughs> December. You know, all the right, Santa Claus is in the Hawaiian shirts you see. Sometimes. Oh, big time. That's what I've been thinking about all week. <laughs> He's going to love it. We'll see you at 10. <laughs>